Wind Walker Monk is a really unique melee class that focuses on martial arts using energy and chi as their resource. This is a beginner guide for patch 10.2 season 3 of Dragonflight. As I said, this is a beginner guide, so there'll be no information overload here, but I am going to teach you the rotation and how to play this spec in a very succinct and efficient manner to get the ball rolling. First up, let's look at the stat priority. This is my priority pyramid, meaning the largest chunk at the bottom is what we want the most of. And this is going to be versatility and crit for Windwalker Monks in 10.2. Then we're going to want mastery, and last and least, we're going to want haste. Now, I would say don't worry too much about this, because we're always going to be trying to get agility and eye level over anything else as a beginner. But if you do have to choose between two secondary stats, this is the format you're going to want to follow. Before we look at the actual core rotation itself, I want to show you a few of the important offensive and defensive abilities and utilities that we actually have at our disposal. Now, we have a lot of spells in our toolkit as a Windwalker monk, and I'm not going to go through all of them. What I will say is when you're more comfortable with the spec and you've had some practice, just look through the spellbook and see what else you have available to you. The same is going to go with the talents. So starting off with offensive at the top, we have Storm, Earth and Fire. This is going to split you into the three elements with you controlling one and the other being sort of AI clones, if you will. This is going to help you do damage and um, those clones are going to do damage for you. We then have Invoke uh, Zhuen, I think it may be pronounced, I'm not sure. Um, this is going to summon a tiger. I'm putting this very simply. The tool tip in game, it's, a, it's quite a big one, but to put it simply, it's going to summon a tiger and that's going to attack your target and it's going to do lots of damage, blah, blah, blah. Then defensive ones, we've got diffuse magic. This is going to reduce magic damage taken and it's actually going to try and mirror back that damage at your attacker or the caster who is trying to do damage to you. And then damp and harm is a very simple one. It's a pure single target on yourself defensive that is going to reduce your damage taken. Let's look at the few utilities. Now, again, there are more, but I think these are the most important I want you to know about. The first one is Ring of Peace, a fantastic utility for you and your allies. It literally summons a ring that you can all stand in of peace, meaning that no enemy is able to enter it and any that will will get pushed out. And last but not least is Roll, and this is going to get you out of any time you're standing in the fire, etc. Or you need a bit of a speed boost, it's going to roll you forward. So now that we're actually in the game, let's look at the talents and core rotation that you are going to be using. So this is the talent build I'm using in the video, and I would recommend for beginners. Now I'll give you a few reasons why I recommend this build. This is a single target cleave build, meaning it's not fully, fully single target, and it's not fully, fully AOE. This means that it's going to be really useful in Mythic Plus, and it's going to be really useful on raids that may have adds, single target bosses, etc. It's basically a really good all around build. This does also mean that I'm only going to be showing you one rotation, not a single target and an AOE rotation. You can, of course, have a rotation for each, but as a beginner, I wouldn't recommend that until you're very comfortable with the spec. And I will also say that a lot of your abilities in this rotation I'm going to show you will cleave, meaning that you don't have to worry too much about, you know, focusing single target. If there's multiple ads, it's going to do a lot of the work for you in that instance. And of course, there will be an import string down below. One thing I want to show you first is this week aura here. I put another link down below to this in the description. And this is something I use for all classes that I play, and it is very useful at tracking your buffs, debuffs, and resources. So as a monk, we have energy here. You can see I have 120 of it. And that's similar to how a rogue does or a feral druid. And then we have six here that you may just be able to faintly see. And if I use my um, tiger palm here, you can see I've generated three of it. Now, this is called Chi. So we have two spells here, Expel Harm and Tiger Palm. Tiger Palm is going to generate two Chi. Expel Harm is going to generate one Chi. And this is our kind of um, resource spender if you will. This is what we're going to be spending for a lot of our abilities. So we have energy and then chi. So I have put this action bar together in a priority list for you. And I would recommend if you're a beginner, maybe do the same because it's, if you set this up in a priority order that your eyes can see, 
rather than all over the place, then you're going to be able to visualize what you need to do next in a lot more of an efficient manner. First up on here, we've got Invoke Zhuen the White Tiger, which we're going to use. And then the second on our priority list is going to be the Touch of Death. And this is going to do a lot of damage, and it's going to spawn some Chi sphere, Spheres? Spheres that grant you one Chi when you walk through them. Use this whenever you are physically able to. We then have Expel Harm, which I previously mentioned. 15 second cooldown, 15 energy, and generates one Chi. We're going to use this if we are under 6 Chi. Remember, 6 Chi is our maximum. We're going to use Expel Harm if we're under 6 Chi and we're high on energy. Same goes for Tiger Palm, which is going to generate um, 2 to 3 Chi, 2 to 3 Chi. And we're going to use this if we're under 5 Chi and we are going to cap on energy. One thing I will also say is that Tiger Palm can make our next blackout kick, which is down here, cost no chi at all. It's a 8% chance for that to happen. The next up on our list is Feline Stomp. This is absolutely stunning. Your abilities have a 6% chance of resetting the cooldown of Feline Stomp while you're fighting on a Feline. Okay, so when we're on this Feline, you have a chance to reset some of the cooldowns of your abilities. And as you can see, it strikes the ground, making this Feline happen, causes damage, and it's going to restore health to allies in the area that are caught within it. And up to five enemies caught in it are going to suffer damage. Now, one other thing to note is this is actually going to cause a debuff on your target. So this is at number five on the priority list. But I do want to say you're only going to use this if your enemies do not have the debuff on them. It's a talent called Feline Harmony. And the debuff, as you can see on here, is called Fey Exposure. Damage taken from me is increased by 12% with that debuff. So you always want to use this at this point in the rotation if your enemy does not have that debuff on them. So then we're going to have Rising Sun Kick. This is going to kick upwards, dealing damage and reducing the effectiveness of healing on the target. And one thing to note about Rising Sun Kick is it actually also works with your Fists of Fury. So this point in the priority list is a bit kind of back and forth. And that is because of a talent called Zhuen's Battle Gear. I really apologize for pronouncing that wrong, by the way. So Rising Sun Kick, this one number seven we've just spoken about, is going to reduce the cooldown of Fists of Fury, this next one, by four seconds. When your Fists of Fury then ends, you're going to actually increase your critical strike chance of your next Rising Sun Kick by 40%. So to explain that bit again, technically it's actually going to be this way around, in that you would use your Fists of Fury, you get the increased crit chance from it, and then you're going to use your Rising Sun Kick because it has a lot higher crit chance. And then after that, the next thing in the actual priority list is going to be Rising Sun Kick anyway. So I hope that makes sense. So you're sort of going to use this and then use this on the crit, but then use it next in your priority list anyway. We are then going to use Blackout Kick and we're only going to use this next in our priority with a buff called Blackout Reinforcement. I can't show you it here because it's actually from our two set bonus. And the two set bonus this tier means that when we get a free proc of Spinning Crane Kick, it's actually going to enhance our Blackout Kick. And we can also get that from our melee attacks. It has a small chance to proc our Blackout Kick. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase the damage of our blackout kick by 200%. If you're wondering how we get the free cast of Spinning Crane Kick, which is next on the priority list, this is a talent here. Spending Chi has a chance to make your next Spinning Crane Kick free and deal an additional 200% damage. So whenever we spend Chi, whenever we use an ability that spends Chi, it has a chance to make our next Spinning Crane Kick which will proc like this, you can see. This is going to be free, so it's not using any chi, and it's going to do 200% more damage. When we use that proc, that is going to make a proc on our blackout kick to do more damage that we haven't got because we don't have our two set bonus from the tier set yet. But that's how that's going to work. So after that, you're then going to use spinning crane kick anyway in the priority list. And then last but not least, it's going to be Chi Burst, which basically hurls a torrent of Chi forward. And that is the core rotation. 
So just to go over it, we're going to use it in this order. We're going to have our cooldown, Zhuan the White Tiger. Touch of Death whenever we actually can. We're going to use Expel Harm if we're under 6 Chi and nearly capping energy. Same with Tiger Palm, but if we're under 5 Chi. Feline Stomp. Use this if the um, enemy you're fighting doesn't have the debuff on them from the Feline Harmony talent. And pretty much then it's going to be on cooldown, I guess you could say. We're then going to use Strike of the Wind Lord. We're then going to use Fists of Fury, which are going to immediately increase the crit chance of our Rising Sun kick. We've spent Chi, and that's given us a proc on our Spinning Crane kick which is then going to empower our blackout kick, but that's from the two set. And then last but not least is Chi Burst. I hope that was straightforward or as straightforward as it can be. It's a, a pretty fairly long rotation, but it is going to cleave. This is great for single target. It's, you know, and if you follow it in this priority order, it's really, really fun. And if you practice this, you're going to do really, really well. So I hope this guide was really useful to you. Don't forget to check out my other guides. I've done a hell of a lot, most of the class guides for patch 10.2 of Dragonflight Season 3. And um, yeah, let me know how you get on in the comments below.